So what I'd like to do now is go through each of those steps in terms of how the vesicles recognize each other, kind of walk you through it and, and, and reinforce it a little bit. So, so what we have is an ER vesicle and we have a RAB GTPase loaded with GTP. It's on the ER vesicle. We also have the Cis Golgi and it interacts via the RAB effector with the RAB. So those bind together and then we had these two sets of snares. So the first thing we do these colors may not be the same as I had previously is so the first step we have loose docking via the rab rab effector interaction Right, so that brings the membranes close enough together that the snares can, can kind of do their speed dating thing and figure out whether they're the appropriate pair. And like I said, the rate of hydrolysis normally for a RAB is really slow. So what you go from a rate, and I'm just making these numbers up, just imagine you go from a rate that's basically like, let's say once every 20 minutes to once in a second. So basically what you would have is a second or a, a set of seconds, maybe milliseconds, for those snares to pair and recognize each other. So this is the initial docking recognition step, this loose docking, kind of just a loose handshake between the RAB and the RAB effectors. But then what you transition to is the following. You have the ER vesicle. Got the RAB GTPase interacting with the RAB effector that's on the Syscolgy. So that interaction brings things together, and then the idea is, and I'm not doing this to scale, is that if that's a good pairing and the snares recognize each other, what you end up with are the snares end up pairing with each other and wrapping around each other. And that provides almost a molecular ratchet that brings the membranes even closer together. So you can imagine you're just kind of cranking this wheel that brings the membranes closer and closer together. And what that allows to happen is a tight docking interaction. So the two, the snares pair, and you get tight docking. So what does that get us? This snare-snare interaction is what actually drives vesicle fusion. That's why you have this loose docking first to kind of just see Am I even in the right ballpark? Is this a vessel? Is this a compartment that seems right? And then you put a time limit on it to make sure to do a double check to check yourself before you wreck yourself. So you bring those membranes very close together. The snares can see if if that can form a productive interaction. And if they do, they provide a molecular ratchet 
that brings the membranes in really close proximity to each other. So what do you get out of that? So how does that make vesicle fusion occur? So what I'll do is I'll just bring these membranes super close together to give you an idea of what's going on. So what ends up happening is, and I'm not going to draw the, the, the RAB GTPase RAB effector interaction, but what you've got is these snares interacting with each other and as they kind of ratchet forward they bring the membranes closer and closer together and I'm just going to zoom in on what happens at that interface eventually what ends up happening is the membranes are brought in such close proximity to each other and I'm not even drawing the snares at this point that there's no water so what does that mean how does that drive membrane fusion, what ends up happening is what keeps the membranes apart largely is the fact that you've got their hydro, they have a hydrophobic core and a hydrophilic head group that kind of allows them to be soluble in solution. But that water between them means that lipids aren't flipping between the two different parts of the membrane. If I exclude the water, then you can what happens is there's no, uh, hydrophilic barrier essentially for the lipids from here to start flowing into the lipids on the target compartment and so that's what you get is that you get fusion as things jump ship and the membranes begin to merge because having those hydrophilic head groups opposing each other create some certain instabilities and allows the membranes to fuse and eventually they become a continuous membrane and so then you have the ER vesicle and I'll just fill this out in blue with the compartment and so you end up something that's more like this and then the compartment of the ER vesicle is now contiguous with the cis Golgi and that's how the vesicle fusion occurs so you know, if you look at this, so what are the principles going on here? Because that's the whole point is kind of, it's not just the molecular details, but it's really important to kind of get a sense of, well, what are the recurring themes in cell biology? So the first one I want to draw attention to is multi-step recognition. And as I say, you know, kind of the catchphrase, which will rapidly go out of uh, popular favor is, you know, you check yourself before you wreck yourself. So anything that's irreversible in cell biology almost always has multiple recognition steps or tests before allowing it to progress. The cell cycle is the prime example of this. But in this case, what we have is the RAB, RAB effector. followed by the T-snare V-snare. And so you can think of this as password protection. So if you change your password and it's a high security, often there will be a security question challenge, like what was your what was your first pet, or what was the color of your first car? Or these days, there's two-step authentication that you change your password, and they will text you something to make sure you are you. The same kind of idea occurs in cell biology. You you check. It seems like okay, this is something I want to do. The rab rab effector pairing seems pretty good. But then I also need to have the V snares and T snares pair appropriately to go forward. So you have one check followed by a second check before you eventually get a productive fusion. So that's a really important concept. It's a concept that comes up over and over and over again. Another concept is this idea of the hydrophobic effect. which I have told you runs 
a huge amount of if you understand how the hydrophobic effect works you're gonna it comes up again and again and again in almost every molecular process so hydrophobic effect what you do is snare pairing brings membranes together but that really what that's doing is excluding water so the effect is what the snares are in some sense doing is they're wrapping around each other being these ratchets it's almost like wringing the water out of a towel is that molecular ratchet brings the membranes in really close opposition water is excluded and that allows the hydrophobic effect to kind of operate and allow the membranes to to become continuous so that's another one of these recurring themes that we see again and again in the class and then the last one that i want to talk about is energy now the key thing is assembly is spontaneous now just look at what we've done what we've done is we've brought the membranes really close together and we've done membrane fusion so we've overcome this barrier but we've done it without using any energy the only energy that's been used has been in making sure it's the right is in the check is in the multi-step recognition it's in making sure it's the right thing the right thing at the right time not in actually doing it and so that's this idea that i've talked about before in terms of clathrin assembly in terms of coat assembly almost always what you use is assembly is spontaneous and disassembly requires energy so so far we haven't used any energy really to do the actual fusion event we've used energy to make sure that the fusion event is specific and what that means is when i made these that the snare snare pair, pairing that super tight pairing is is energetically advantageous so it once they're brought in close proximity they just ratchet like crazy and bring everything close together and that that interaction is energetically favorable it doesn't require inputting energy into the system but what that means is and i'm going to talk about that in the next streamcast is that what we have to do is put energy into the system to break those snares apart